Hello everybody, let's try to solve this 3D rigid body problem. We are going to be solving this using vectors, so it's good to have a nice recall to it, but I'll give you everything you guys need to know in order to solve this problem. So pretty much the question goes, determine the X and Z components of reaction at the journal bearing A. This is your journal bearing, and these are the reactions that are produced here. If you want to recall, please see the previous video linked at the top of your screen. And the tension in cords BC and BD necessary for equilibrium of the rod. So we have vectors created here in these tension members, FBC vector and the FBD vector. All right, so let's look at FBC first and see what we can do here. So FBC is going to equal to the magnitude of FBC times the unit vector uh, or the direction of BC. Okay, so what is this unit vector? Let's get a recall of this. We have U is equal to vector RBC over the magnitude of RBC. Now I know this is a scary uh, recall to what we've done in the past, but I'll give it a quick explanation. So our position vector RBC, or the vector RBC, is a vector that locates a point with respect to another point. So we're gonna be taking the difference of C to B based on the tip to tail method. And we're gonna be just dividing it by the magnitude to give us a unit, uh, unit vector which simply represents a dimensionless vector to specify the direction of our original vector that we're looking for, okay? Seems simple enough. Let's uh, see how simple it is when we actually solve this problem. So we have RBC first to solve for. And we need to figure out what our points are between C and B, okay? So where's C? C is right up here. So we can see that on the x-axis from the origin, which is right here, we have two meters away from the origin on the x-axis, three meters away with respect to y, and four meters away with respect to z. So we're left with two i, and these are all positive by the way, two i plus three j plus four k. And we can do the same thing uh, with the other point, which is b two meters away from the origin with respect to x and six meters away with respect to y. No altitude or z component, so we are left with 2i plus 6j plus 0k. And then solving that, we are left with negative 3i, or j, sorry, plus 4k. Cool, now we can solve for the magnitude of this position vector. We actually have Pythagoras' theorem, because we're simply taking the components of this force and we're finding that, you know, the hypotenuse that creates that resultant force. So we have 3 squared plus 4 squared, which is simply equal to 5. And then we bring that all back to our unit vector, which we were looking for originally. And we were just defining these components, negative 3j plus 4k divided by 5. This is going to allow us to solve for FBC, finally. If we plug in our numbers, we are just simply left with FBC times what we solved for previously from our unit vector, which is going to equal to this big ugly formula. So now we can actually proceed and solve for FBD, but it's going to be the sim a very similar process to what we did before. You know, instead of uh, instead of this value, where is it here? Instead of this being three, this is actually going to be nine. The three J is going to turn into a nine J, and point B is going to be the same. So this is actually going to be positive three now, and you're going to be left with solving this formula, and you're going to realize that FBD is actually just going to be this except positive 0 0.6 instead of negative. Okay, so now I've cleaned up this problem so that we can represent what we've solved for into something that we can actually see. So we have our vectors FBC and FBD, and these components uh, of this vector are actually represented by projections that are placed on the planes of our Cartesian system. But right now, they are only represented by uh, the values we have before 
in unit vectors because we don't have the magnitude of FBC yet and we don't have the magnitude of FBD yet, right? So we need to solve that. But we also have the reactions here that we still need to solve for as well. So there's a lot going on. So the one instinct that we should always have is to consider our equilibrium equations. Similar to last time. Summation of forces of x will equal 0. So let's see where our x components are. Well, we have, remember, our a of x, right? a of x. What other x components do we have here? Do you see any? I don't. So that means that a of x is our only component here, which means it's 0, right? So we can now move on to summation of forces of y, which will equal 0. And let's see what we have here. Why we actually have a lot of forces that we need to deal with. So our blue is highlighting our y component right now. So we have, first of all, we can do negative 0.6 FBC plus 0.6 FBD. But then we also have an additional y component here represented by F2 which is positive, so we have positive 350. Clearly we can't solve this equation yet because we have two unknowns, so we just have to move on to our next point, which is Fz summation will equal zero, okay? Once again, we're remembering this journal bearing has a re reaction there. So we have a z in the positive direction assumed. We have this negative force coming downwards, right? as negative 800, but then we also have our z components that we solved for earlier. So we have positive 0.8 FBC plus 0.8 FBD. We still have a lot of unknowns here, so we need to move on to our next equilibrium equation, which is going to be moment at x is equal to 0. Remember, the journal bearing is going to have a moment produced here, moment ax, and we just assume that our positive convention uh, counterclockwise is going to be positive. So first we have max in our equation. Then we need to consider what is going to rotate about the x-axis. We know it's going to be our z components for sure. So we have three z components here. We have 800 downwards, which is going to be a negative sign, right? But we also have six meters going from x to that, uh, that force, right? So it's going to be negative 800 times the distance six. And we also consider our components that we solved for earlier, which are both going in the positive direction with respect to x, positive 0.8 FBC times 6, and the same for the other force, FBD times 6. Still have to keep going. There's a lot of unknowns that we can't solve for yet, so we're going to keep going to my, which is equal to 0. And why? Let's think about it. We have our y-axis here. We know once again that the z components are going to be creating a rotation about that y-axis. So that's going to be our main focus here. So we have these three z components again. But we also need to remember, right, these uh, components running along the xy plane are not producing any moment, right? It was the same thing for x. So first we consider uh, that we have zero is going to be equal to, let's look at 800 first. This is actually going to be going in the positive direction because it's going counterclockwise with respect to y. 800 times that distance away, it's two meters from the y-axis. And then we consider our forces again. These are both going in the negative direction now, so we have negative 0.8 FBC, the same distance as the previous force, and then we just finish writing that down. Lastly, we are going to consider mz. The summation of moment at z is going to be equal to 0. We remember our journal bearing is still here. We have maz. And that is what we're going to start our equation with, maz. And then we have to consider all forces that are going to affect this member here. We see that force is definitely not going to. These two forces definitely will. 
and any force parallel with the z-axis will not. So we only have two forces that are affecting this problem, which is going to be our y components of the force, negative 0 0.6 FBC with 2. And then we have the opposite sign, because this is going to be going counterclockwise with respect to z, positive 0 0.6 FBD. Now, we pretty much just have a bunch of uh, equations that we need to solve for. There are many ways you could do this. You could solve it online. Uh, but if you were to do this on a test, I would try to substitute one variable for another. So let's say here I could isolate for FBD and make FBD equal to FBC times a component. And then you plug in that value wherever there's an FBC in a different equation. And then that will allow you to solve for FBD. And then you can solve all the other uh, equations after that point. But the simplest way to solve this would just be online or through a calculator, if that's allowed for you guys. But conceptually on a test, you wouldn't really have a, a, a problem this uh, complex with linear solving. So this leaves us with our final answers over here, as FBD is 208 newtons. FBC is going to be 792 newtons. AZ equal to zero. We recall AX is equal to zero. MAX will equal zero as well. And then MAZ, 700 newtons per meter. All right, that's your final answer. I hope the, the concept of solving these types of problems uh, helped you guys to recall vectors a little bit better and, you know, to be prepared for a thinking problem kind of like this. I hope this helped.